I'd like to share with you an experience that my community has been having for the last year and a half or so. It's an experience of age reversal that I thought couldn't be true, but we're seeing it play out in real life. So it comes from a combination of both experimental evidence in animal models, but now playing out in the real world. Now to understand this story, it starts with a very peculiar and bizarre set of experiments. A set of experiments called heterochronic parabiosis. And all that means is a research group took two animals and connected their circulatory systems, their arteries and veins. One animal was old, one animal was young. Well, they noticed, they observed that when you connect the circulatory systems of these two animals, the older uh, animal got young again, or at least uh, took back many of the features of being youthful. They tried to identify the factors responsible for this, and they identified several. Several were peptide factors, but one of them was also oxytocin. Now, that's going to prove uh, useful to understand later on in this story. An unrelated set of experiments were performed at MIT by a, a cancer research group, and they gave uh, mice a bacteria, Lactobacillus rotari. And they noticed that within a week of these animals getting this bacteria, they noticed that the fur became, as they said, rich and luxurious. And they studied these animals to see why. Why would they have different thick, uh, moist fur within a week? They found that it was due to a boost in oxytocin, the hormone oxytocin that comes from the hypothalamus and pituitary. But they, but they made other very important observations. They noticed that if they shaved the backs of these mice and made a little bald spot, hair would grow much faster if these mice were given rotari. They noticed that if a wound was inflicted, healing time was cut by 50%. There was a huge acceleration of healing. They observed that collagen deposition in the dermis, just below the surface of skin, was explosive. There was a lot more collagen being deposited. They noticed that the animals played with each other more so. They continued to mate even later into life. Uh, they also noticed that the males had a big uptick in their testosterone, and both males and females had a major uh, increase in growth hormone. Now, they did one very interesting experiment with relevance to aging and anti-aging, or age reversal. That is, they took two groups of mice and gave them both an awful diet. It was a diet meant to mimic a fast food diet, white flour products, hydrogenated oils, fried foods, all garbage foods that they serve in fast food restaurants. One group they gave the fast food diet alone. Well, this group got fat, lost hair, uh, got tired, stopped mating. They got old fat and then died. Another group of mice were given the same kind of crappy diet, fast food diet, but also given rotari. These animals stayed slender their entire lives, which with rich, thick hair, continued to play with each other and mate. They stayed young until they died, just by the addition of roideri. So that's kind of a really interesting conversation. A lot of this is due to oxytocin, the 300% increase in oxytocin that was observed in these experimental models. Now, uh, you and I can get roideri. But it's sold to us. The, the strains used in these experiments uh, are available as a probiotic product called gastrus. Unfortunately, gastrus is intended for infants because when babies get this product with 100 million counts of two strains of lactobacillus rotari, they have less uh, infantile colic. They have less regurgitation of breast milk or formula. So babies are given these tablets. These, so these tablets are crafted for infants. Well, what if you and I want these strains? And by the way, these effects are likely specific to these strains. Um, There's something called strain specificity. You must pay attention to strains. So to illustrate, you have E. coli. Your family has E. coli in their guts. I have E. coli. But what if you're exposed to lettuce contaminated with cow manure with a different strain of E. coli? Well, you can die of that. You can die of kidney failure, sepsis, etc. Same species, E. coli, different strain. So strain specificity can literally be a life-death difference. So in the case of Rotari, we want the strains uh, with which these uh, observations were made. And those are the DSM-17938 and the ATCC-PTA-6475. Those two strains available as this gastrous product. Well, so we get this, this, this uh, tablet with very low counts suitable for an infant. 
So that motive made, motivated me to make a yogurt. It's not really yogurt. By FDA regulations, to call something yogurt, it has to be fermented with two bacterial species, Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus. We're not doing that. We ferment with Lactobacillus reuteri, those two strains. And we also tweak it further. We ferment for an extended period, 36 hours, not the four hours of commercial yogurt. Remember the old kid's riddle? If I give you a penny on day one and double it every day for a, for a month, how much money will you have at the end of 30 days? Well, kids will often say, oh, $10,000, right? No, five and a half million dollars. But think how that works. Day one, a penny. Day two, two cents, four cents, eight cents, and so on. It seems like it's going to amount to nothing, right? because it's the last few days in that 30 days, we get the huge increases into the millions of dollars. That's how bacteria double also. The first, so when bacteria double, one becomes two, two becomes four, etc. cetera, uh, during fermentation, the increase in bacterial counts in the first four hours is trivial. It's in the last few hours, hour 30, 36, that where you get these huge increases. So in a half cup serving, of this yogurt we make, we get about 90 billion counts of rotary bacteria. We consume a half cup a day, and we are indeed seeing all these effects. We're seeing uh, smoother skin, reduction of skin wrinkles, acceleration of healing. It's not quite 50%, but it's pretty darn fast. Your hair grows thicker, uh, or at least grows back faster. Fingernails and toenails grow faster. Your appetite is suppressed. You, can, you have absolute control over temptation and hunger. Your libido goes up. Your muscle strength increases dramatically. Your muscle mass can go up, especially if you combine it with some uh, quantity of strength training. That seems to prompt a much greater quantity of muscle growth. There's also preservation of bone density. There's also some other interesting effects of rotary that have nothing to do with oxytocin. That rotary also colonize the upper GI tract where it produces something called bacteriosins, which are natural antibiotics effective against the, what's called enterobacteriaceae, which are the organisms of SIBO. That's a whole other conversation. Rotary also causes you to experience greater empathy and a desire for human connection. Now think about that. 96% of all Americans have lost rotary due to a combination of factors. Antibiotics as children, uh, glyphosate residues in food, uh, herbicides, pesticides, and antibiotic residues in produce and in meat. Uh, and more and more mothers are simply don't have it themselves. They don't have rotary themselves, and thereby don't pass it on to their children by passage through the birth canal, breastfeeding, or contact. So we have a world where very few people less than 1 in 20 continue to harbor Lactobacillus rotary. We also live in a world where there's record-setting social isolation, suicide, and divorce. Could the loss of Lactobacillus rotary be at least part of the explanation of those social phenomena? I think so. So when you restore rotary and thereby experience a surge in oxytocin, you also have this desire for company, human company. People say things like this to me, I like my spouse better, I like my children, I like my family better, I like my neighbors better, I go up to strangers and talk to them, introduce myself, I cry more at movies. These are all oxytocin effects. But the reason I'm telling you all this is because uh, all those effects that we talked about, thicker skin, greater dermal collagen, smoother skin wrinkles, restoration of youthful muscle, preservation of bone density. Uh, deeper sleep, much deeper sleep. That's one of the effects I get extravagantly. Very deep sleep uh, as a prior insomniac, by the way. Um, uh, these are age-reversing effects. It's the closest I've come to. And this is just with one bacteria. I'm very excited. We're starting to see now some very interesting effects when we combine various bacteria. One of the new lessons learned was I, we've been cultivating Lactobacillus casei chiroda. And we did that because it uh, increases your protection from respiratory viruses. It reduces your potential for a respiratory viral illness by about 50% in human clinical trials. Uh, and if you do get a respiratory virus, it abbreviates the course by about 50% or more. And it also reduces many inflammatory markers. So we cultivated Lactobacillus casei schroda, same way as we did with the 
lactobacillus roteri, getting very, very high counts, in this case, over 100 billion counts per half cup serving. It's, once again, a rich, thick, delicious yogurt like the roteri yogurt. But, uh, you know, I, b we believe it provides better respiratory protection, but one of the other effects is even deeper sleep. So the uh, KCI Shirota is a wonderful sleep aid if you want to get back to youthful sorts of sleep. That is the way you slept when you were a kid, with vivid dreams, longer REM periods, wonderful, deep, restorative sleep. If you want to make the Rotary yogurt for its age-reversing effects, for its empathy, and oxytocin boosting effects, and also the upper GI colonizing protection against uh, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Then see my Wheat Belly blog. There's a post called Making L Rotary Yogurt, a step-by-step -step guide. It does mean you're gonna have to buy the probiotic the first time, and you'll find where to get that in that, in that Wheat Belly blog post. It's a few dollars. You don't have to buy it again. You make it the first time from tablets, uh, and then you make subsequent batches from a little bit of the prior batch, a couple tablespoons either of the solids, the curds, or the liquid, the whey, or both. Uh, you will need some kind of device to maintain a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, while most people make yogurt at home or commercial yogurt makers use a temperature of 108, 114 degrees, this organism, because it's not yogurt, right, uh, prefers a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly human body temperature. So you're going to need some kind of means, some kind of device to keep at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The choices are there are yogurt makers that have adjustable temperature because most of them that are preset uh, will heat to 108 to 114 degrees for conventional yogurt making. We don't want that. We don't that that temperature rotary can die. So we want a device where you can adjust the temperature to 100 degrees or, or so. And another reason to have an adjustable temperature control is as we expand our strategies for cultivating other bacterial species, there are bacteria that are like 125 degrees. So it'd be helpful if you're interested in trying to do some of these projects with us to have a device that where you can adjust the temperature. So you'll find um, two devices that we prefer in my Wheat Belly Marketplace and the Wheat Belly blog. Uh, inexpensive devices. You can use a sous vide device. That's what I use, a slow meat cooker. But unfortunately, the run I've caused talking about this has caused the basin sous vide makers to sh jack their prices way up, like seven or eight fold. So that's not good. But you can still get stick, what are called stick sous vides. These are just inexpensive sticks. They're about $80, $80 or so. Uh, you will need some kind of a basin. You can buy a basin that it attaches to or you can craft one yourself. And that heats the water for you. Uh, some people just use... Uh, they're instant pots, but it has to be an instant pot that has a lower temperature, not the conventional. Some of the newer ones uh, are able to do this. Some people even just put a light bulb on in their oven, and that seems to keep it around 100 degrees. Now, that's not, not going to be helpful for some of the higher temperature projects we have, but at least it would be useful for this. But we ferment for 36 hours, a longer time, right, for much higher bacterial counts and thereby much, much greater biological effects when you consume the yogurt. We also ferment in the presence of a prebiotic fiber, such as inulin powder or raw potato starch. And the reason for that is you feed the bacteria. If you make it without the prebiotic fiber, the end product, the end result will be thinner and more liquid. We want a rich, thick, delicious end product. Um, by the way, it's, it's better than store-bought yogurt. Uh, one caution, your first batch is typically curds and whey. That is, it'll separate. That's okay. Use either the curds or the whey to make your next batch, and it's subsequent batches that tend to be uh, much thicker and richer. So uh, this is how we make the Rotary yogurt. We know there's issues with dairy. We know that. Uh, this, this method we're using minimizes, it doesn't eliminate, but minimizes some of the issues with dairy. For one, extended fermentation maximally converts lactose to lactic acid. That's why it's kind of tart. Uh, and so there's almost no lactose, and many people lactose intolerant are able to tolerate this yogurt. The accumulation of lactic acid that makes it tart drops the pH to 3.5 when we test it. That level of acidic pH denatures or breaks down the casein beta A1. That's the form of casein in dairy and most of North American dairy products that is potentially immunogenic, immune system stimulating. So we break down, it's not limited, but it's much reduced. And if you're fearful of the whey effect, whey is unique among proteins in that like carbohydrates, it can provoke insulin release. And for some people, that can block weight loss or cause weight gain. 
So you, two ways to get rid of the whey. You can pour, once you scoop out some of the curds, you'll see the whey separating. You can pour that out, or for more thorough removal of whey, you can strain it just as you would for Greek yogurt. What we do is put some cheesecloth or a coffee filter in a colander, uh, uh, put the colander set up in a big pan or bowl, then put the yogurt in the uh, lined colander, let that sit for about four hours covered, lightly covered, so it doesn't get contaminated, and let the whey drain out, and then either toss it, throw the whey away, or save it to make your next batch, because there's bacteria both the whey and the curds. But this is how you minimize that whey effect. You can also make this with coconut milk. Uh, there's several other steps. See my Wheat Belly blog for the added steps to use. When you, It is fussier, it's trickier to make with coconut milk, but you can do it. This is the first. Our Lactobacillus ruteri yogurt is the first in a series of new projects I'll be talking about where we're using specific bacteria and combinations of bacteria to obtain very interesting and very powerful health effects.